This video will show you how to draft your own basic pattern for the Moth and Rust Handmade Coquette Bloomers. Please note that while I will go over some of the construction basics, this is not a detailed tutorial on how to sew them. The main purpose of this video is to show you how to figure out the dimensions for your bloomers. Also, you can find a companion post on my blog, which I will link in the description. There I will give examples of sizes, have some images of the pattern, and include any other extra notes. I also want to say that as with any sewing project, if you plan on making this from an expensive or otherwise precious fabric, I would highly recommend making one from something very inexpensive first to make sure that it is correct. And if it isn't, you can adjust accordingly before moving on to the more expensive fabric. So to begin, there are basically four parts of the pattern. The bloomer leg itself, the ruffles that attach to the leg hem, the hip ruffles, which are sewn around the main part of the bloomers, and the casing for the elastic or drawstring waistband. The three measurements you will need are your hip measurement at the fullest part, your waistband measurement, whether that's your actual waist or your upper hips, and the distance from your waistband area to the floor. First, let's figure out the size of the leg or the actual bloomer portion. To find the measurement for width A, multiply your hip measurement by 0.57. So for example, if your hips measure 40 inches, you will multiply that by 0.57, and you will come up with 22.8 inches. You could also round this up or down depending on the number. I would probably just make this 23. To find the measurement for width B, add four to six inches to measurement A. For a smaller size, add four inches. For a medium size, add five. And for a larger size, add six. To help determine how much you'd wanna add, you can reference my blog post as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The inseam should be about 1.25 to 1.5 inches for all sizes. To find the measurement of the front crotch line or measurement C, take your distance measurement from waistband to floor and multiply that by 0.28. To find the measurement of the back crotch line or measurement D, take your measurement distance from waistband to floor and multiply that by 0.32. The waistline should slope gently down toward the front and this center part here measures about 8 to 9 inches, again depending on the size and your personal preference. To find your leg ruffle, measure the bottom of the leg and multiply that by 2.5. This will be how much you need for each leg opening. So for example, if your leg opening is 28 inches, you'll need about 70 inches for each leg. Now to find the measurement for the hip ruffles, you'll want to mark your ruffle lines on your bloomers and figure out how long those are. For the smallest bloomers, the lines are about 2.25 inches apart, and for the larger ones, they're about 2.75 inches apart. Please note that toward the crotch seam, these lines rise slightly so they aren't too far down into the curve. So to find out how much length you'll need for each hip ruffle, measure this ruffle line on one side, then multiply that by five. You'll need two of these hip ruffles. So for example, if the line measures 28, one hip ruffle should end up being about 140 inches. And by the way, the width of the hip ruffles and the leg ruffles are about four inches or four and a quarter inches for larger sizes. Now for the waistband casing, you'll need a piece of fabric, the length of your waist area, or the measurement from part A multiplied by two. The width of this casing may vary depending on how you want to make your waistband, but mine are usually a little under three inches wide. The elastic I use for these is about three eighths of an inch wide. If you're using a drawstring, you'll need to remember to put two holes in your waistband casing. Generally, I make drawstrings that measure the waistband plus 30 inches, but this can vary a lot depending on your personal preference. Before you cut out your pieces, I want to note that the measurements I've given are all for a seam allowance that is about 3 eighths of an inch because I use a serger to make these. If you're using the standard 5 eighths inch seam allowance, you'll need to add about a quarter inch to your seam allowances. This doesn't apply really to the top of the hip ruffles though, and I'll show you why in a bit. So again, this is not meant to be a comprehensive guide to sewing, but I do want to share some general directions for constructing 
between your bloomers. To begin with, make sure all your ruffle pieces are sewn together, as you'll likely have to cut more than one piece, especially for the hip ruffles, unless you cut your ruffles lengthwise or with the grain of the fabric, which I would not recommend. The leg ruffles should remain as one long rectangle for now, but you'll want each hip ruffle to be sewn into a continuous tube. If you haven't yet, mark out your hip lines using chalk, fabric pen, or just a regular old pencil, which is what I use. Now attach your leg ruffles to the bottom of the leg. You may want to baste the top to keep them gathered, but I've made a lot of these and so I usually just gather as I go, but whatever works for you is what you should be doing. After attaching each leg ruffle, I put the bloomer pieces together right sides facing and stitch the front and back seams. After that, keeping the right sides together, line up the front and back seams of the crotch so that you can stitch across that inseam part. Now you can use a narrow hem to finish the leg edges. I would also recommend finishing the bottom edges of each hip ruffle at this time. To attach the hip ruffles, again, I would recommend basting along the unfinished edge to gather them, then align the gathered edge with the line you drew. Top stitch about a quarter or three eighths of an inch away from that edge. Once you're done with that, you can fold the ruffle edge down and top stitch again about three eighths of an inch away from the top edge. Then finally, you can attach your waistband using your preferred method. I would recommend using a walking foot for this as that can help moderate the tension and prevent the waistband from becoming wavy as you sew it. Then just pop in your elastic or drawstring, whatever the case may be, and you're done. Thank you for watching, and again, you can visit the link in the description to find the blog post that goes along with this video. I will be putting any additional notes there. If you enjoyed this video, check out some more of my sewing tutorials here.